sir. I'll be with you in a moment. We're in luck, Miss Pomeroy's with it. <laughs> now you know what to say, Matilda. Of course I do. Yeah, Captain Huxley, Miss Pomeroy. <laughs> well, good morning, ladies. <laughs> As you know, Captain, we girls are leaving this cruise at Genoa. And we want you and Miss Pomeroy to know how we feel. Would you mind holding this, my dear? Well, thank you. Captain Huxley, we want you to know that your efficiency and inspirational personality have made this cruise a memorable one. <laughs> well, it's all in the line of duty, ladies. So we want you to have this token of our esteem. Well, thank you. A cuckoo clock. <laughs> to Captain Simon P. Huxley. Well done, old salt. <laughs> old salt. Well, now, thank you, ladies. <laughs> I shall remember this until I join that ship up yonder in the sky. We bought it in Venice. The moment we saw it, we knew it was you. <laughs> I know just what you mean. And you, Miss Pomeroy. You shouldn't have. You two have contributed to the enjoyment of this trip. And we'd be most unappreciative if we didn't give you our sincere thanks. Oh. <sighs> Certainly. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> Just what I needed. Calluses. Oh, now, now, Miss Pomeroy. <laughs> oh, Cedric. I have to go to the bridge. Put this in a safe place. I wouldn't want anything to happen to that. You can trust me, Captain. <laughs> what's he so happy about? A cuckoo. That he is. But what's he so happy about? It's a clock. A little gift from the passengers. Noogie! What? You should have seen him ham it up. Who? Moby Dick. It's only a clock. The way he accepted it, you'd think they'd handed him the Nobel Prize. Captain, we want you to know that your efficiency and inspirational personality have made this trip a memorable one. Oh, brother. Oh, you haven't heard anything yet. We want you to have this token of our esteem. Well done, Captain. Well done. Easy with that. It's all in the line of duty, ma'am. The old salt thanks you. I'll remember this until I join that ship up yonder in the sky. Now look what you've done. <laughs> the captain have my neck for this. Uh, don't get excited. Maybe it's still all right. another notch. Oh, how long will it take? I don't know. I never dried a clock before. Well, it jolly well better work, or we'll be in real trouble. <laughs> got a terrible cold. Well, there's no way out. I've got to tell the captain. Tell the captain what? Well, naturally, I hate to snitch on a lady. Oh, thanks, Cedric. I hate to, but I will. 
But you can't do that. Now, let's, let's just keep calm and think our way out of this. How can I avoid the wrath of the captain? I hear they're taking volunteers for rocket trips to the moon. <laughs> We're docked in Genoa, right? Right. I'll have the clock repaired and bring it back on the ship in no time. But supposing the captain wants to see it before you get back? Just tell him the truth, Cedric, the simple truth. What truth? You're an amnesia victim. Amnesia? Got it in the war. The war? What war? You see, you can't remember already. You were doing fine. <laughs> Come on, Nugie. Susanna. Mm-hmm. What war? That's the spirit. Keep it up. <laughs> Goodbye, Mrs. Tiff. Goodbye. 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 Thank you again. Have a good time in Genoa, folks. Not too much fun now. Remember, we're sailing at midnight. Oh, Cedric. Did you put that clock in my cabin? I didn't see it there. You didn't, sir? No, I didn't. I can understand why, sir. Coming, Mrs. Tibbles. Sorry to have kept you waiting. <laughs> Mrs. Tibbles? Well, now, how can she be over there when she just left the ship? <laughs> Miss Pomeroy, what's the matter with Cedric? He seems to have lost his mind. Oh, didn't you know, sir? He, he was an amnesia victim during the war. Some days he doesn't even know his own name. Oh. You're going into Genoa to see the sights? Yes, we always enjoy seeing the sights. Well, now, don't forget to see the statue of Columbus. You know, he was born here. Well, aren't we sailing under the second greatest navigator of them all? Oh, now, Miss Pomeroy, you can't compare me with Columbus. <laughs> you know, he discovered a new land. Oh, now, don't be so modest, sir. Remember when we hit that coral reef in the Pacific? It wasn't even on the map. <laughs> uh, Miss Nugent. That's a strange-looking bundle. Oh, yes. It, it, it's... it's... Oh, what is it, Susanna? It's our lunch. Oh, yes, of course, it's our lunch. Wrapped in a blanket? Keeps it warm. Miss Pomeroy, you sure you're feeling all right? Well, I think I'll feel better when we get our lunch ashore. <laughs> uh, just a moment. Miss Pomeroy, I want to thank you for your change in attitude on this cruise. You found something out, sir? On the contrary. This is the first trip that our social director has not engaged in any shenanigans, no tricks, no... What was that? Oh, I beg your pardon. Bye. Until some lout with fingers of a blacksmith lays clumsy hands upon it. All I do is overwind her a little. A little? Ping. How would you like to have somebody overwind your head a little, eh? Like it? Oh, a piece of Swiss art by a Swiss artist. What you did to it? The mainspring broke. Oh, the pinion gear cracked. Hey, you're killing me. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but to me... A timepiece is a vibrant, living thing. It is like a person, a member of the family. And anyone who desecrates it is like a murderer. Good morning. Ah, buongiorno, signorine. Uh, we have a clock we'd like you to look at. Oh, with the greatest of pleasure. A magnificent instrument. Uh, yes, only instead of going cuckoo, it goes cuckoo. Oh, this, this sad misfortune. How did it happen? Well, you won't believe it, but the cuckoo went for a swim. A swim? It's a long story, and you wouldn't believe it anyway. Wait, we shall see. Huh? Ah, yes. Yes, fine, fine, splendid, splendid. Could not be better. Can you fix it? No. Why not? Because, 
Because this is an original Hans Schlosser. And only Hans Schlosser himself can fix it properly. Well, could you tell us where we could find him? Oh, very simple. You go to the corner, turn right, two blocks. Hmm. Isn't it wonderful he's so close? Oh, he's not there. Uh, that is where you catch the bus for the airplane terminal. His shop is in Switzerland. Switzerland? Switzerland? A little village near Davos, about two hours from here. Well, there goes the money I was saving for that new dress. We'll just have to buy the caps on another clock. Another? Another one like this? <laughs> oh, no, 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 never, ladies. Hans Schlosser makes only one of a kind. Well, Switzerland, here we come. Susanna, we're not going to Switzerland to fix this clock. You're going to the captain and tell him the truth. Take your medicine. Yeah. What can he do to me? <laughs> sure. What can he... What can he do to me? <laughs> I hear it's lovely in Switzerland this time of year. We've got to see a man about a bird. Come on, Nugie. Yeah. Well, uh, goodbye and thank you. No, 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 no. You give that clock the love it deserves. Remember, it's like... Yeah, I know. It's like a member of the family. We'll send it a card every Mother's Day. Come in. Did you call me, sir? Yes. Cedric, where did you put that clock? Clock, sir? What clock? The present that I... What do you mean, what clock? The clock I gave you to put in a safe place. Well? What's the matter? Audible. That's what it is. Me amnesia's come back. Amnesia? Well, how is it you haven't mentioned that to me before? That's the worst of it. Sometimes I get it so bad, I can't even remember I've got it. Well, well Cedric, you've got to pull yourself together. That clock is important to me. That's a symbol of the regard the passengers have for me. Now, where did you put it? What, sir? Look, let's start at the beginning. What is your name? Cedric Hawk. And what is my name? Captain Knox. And what is the name of the ship that we're on now? What ship? The Cuckoo Ship. Uh, the, the Cuckoo Clock. The Ocean Queen. That's it. That's the ship. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know where you put it, but it can't be far away. Bernard with a hot water bottle. <laughs> to warm one up, there's nothing better than hot chocolate. Oh, oh. well, you run along and order a couple of gallons while I pay the driver. Well, and thank you. <laughs> How much do we owe you? Oh, done. <laughs> it is, as you Americans call it, a, a hike hitch. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> there's Hans Schlosser's. Oh, fine. Bye. Hey! What can I do for you, young lady? Could you fix this for me right away? Oh, I'm sorry, but that's impossible. The shop is closed. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Today is William Tell Day, our village's biggest holiday. I'm in charge of the arrangements. <laughs> but this is a matter of life and death. <gasps> life and death? Oh, I'm sure you exaggerate. All right, then. You take it to Captain Huxley. Well, I don't understand, but if it's that important, I'm Schloss will look. It's not very much. No. A little adjustment here, a squirt of oil there, and a bellows to make the cuckoo sing. <laughs> hey, Otto! You calling me, Papa? You know any other Otto? 
about half the other boys in the village. <laughs> Go and fetch me a number 14 bellows. Okay. Uh, will it take long? Oh, 15, maybe 20 minutes. Oh, good. I'll be at the cafe having some hot chocolate. Papa, we do not have one that size. Oh, my memory. But does not matter? Oh, you can still fix it? Of course. I'll send for some new bellows and fix it on Monday. Monday? But I have to be back at the ship by midnight. Couldn't you get the bellows now? Well, there are some in the next village, but who could go? Everyone will be at the festival. Well, in the next village? Maybe I could go get it. Well, if you wish. Oh. Well, I've survived a, a plane and sleigh ride today. Maybe I'll still be lucky. Just tell her, Kimmelmann that her Schlosser wants a number 14 bellows. Fjörsein, all right. Uh, which way do I go? There. Just 10 miles over the mountain. Ten? <laughs> Can't say I didn't try. I, I guess I know when I'm whipped. Papa, why cannot I go? For a very good reason. You're appearing in the pageant. But I would rather not be in the pageant. Every year it is the same. Singing and dancing. Is singing and dancing? Well, I sing and dance. Why can't I take his place? You're not Swiss. Get me off these skis and nobody will ever know the difference. Oh, please, Herr Schlosser. I, I, I just got to get that clock fixed today. All right. <sighs> You go. And give it all you've got, Otto. I've got to get that clock back before the captain finds out it's missing. Cedric, there's no need to stare at the door. The clock isn't going to just walk in here, you know. And don't ask me what clock. Now I remember what clock. You do? Why, certainly. It's the one the passengers gave you this morning. The one you told me to put in a safe place. Yes, now we're getting somewhere. Go on, go on. Every detail comes back to me. I took the clock from you. Yes. Carried it down the deck. And then? Then's when it happened. What? Me amnesia came back. Oh. <laughs> Lift your sign on high and sing. on every William tell day it comes the time for me to make a little speech. No, no, no. <laughs> As it does on every William tell day, I save my speech for the next William tell day. <laughs> I have a surprise for you. A guest of ours from across the sea has offered to take the place of my son Otto in the pageant. Fräulein Susanna Pomeroy from the United States of America, U.S.A. I just love your native costume. Oh, but that's the wrong one. The wrong one? Your singing and dancing comes later. My mistake. Here. What's this? The right costume. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as the highlights of our pageant, Miss Pomeroy will enact the part of the son of William Tell. The son of William Tell. That ought to be fun. I'll be right back. The son of William Tell? He, you, you mean, you mean the one, the one who gets the, with the, right here? Oh, you know the story. O only too well. Thanks a lot anyway, but uh, I'm, I'm allergic to apples. Oh, don't be afraid. Her upper man is our best archer, an expert. Sure knows his stuff. <laughs> 
Don't forget, William Tell, when you aim for the apple, it's up here. All this below is me. I never miss. Never. Well, you'd better not. Remember, I'm U.S. territory. Touch one hair on this head and you'll answer to the Army, the Navy, the Marines, and the Air Force. To say nothing of the Coast Guard. The Army, the Navy, the Marines, and the Air Force. Oh, all against all. Than Otto. Here. One moment. Susanna Pomeroy, if you're going to kill yourself, don't come running to me. Oh, stop worrying. He's an expert. Already on this end, Mr. Tell. <laughs> <laughs> Papa, what are you doing under the table? The light is better here. Besides, it's safer. Did you get the bellows? Yeah, here they are. Oh, the right one. Miss Pomeroy, you're in luck. I'll have your clock fixed in a minute. Looks like I will be, too. <laughs> ho, ho, hold your fire. You, I, I don't think you're yourself today. D don't, don't bother. I, I'll cut it in half myself. Don't move. I may be missed. Who's moving? I shoot on the count of three. One. Two. Your pardon. <laughs> and you told me to put it in a safe place. So, clock clutched in my bosom, I am strolling past the swimming pool. Oh, go on, when... Cedric. Now, what happened to the clock? <laughs> what clock? You know very well what clock. The cuckoo clock. Oh, that's it. It's right where I put it this morning. Where? Right there. <laughs> There's something awfully fishy going on around here. Come in. I just wanted you to know I'm back from Genoa, sir. That statue of Columbus, magnificent. Miss Pomeroy, if I didn't know you were off of the ship, I'd think you had something to do with this clock. What clock? While you were gone, some Swiss passengers joined the cruise. Oh, that's nice. Yes, and I learned something from them. I'm sure you don't know it, but today is William Tell Day. No. Yes, so I've arranged a little celebration in honor of the occasion. It's nothing elaborate, of course. Oh, well, good. I know some Swiss songs and dances. Excellent. And that will fit in nicely with the little duet you and I are going to do. Oh. Now, you stand right there. Here's your costume. <laughs> I used to be quite an archer in college. <laughs> Shall we try it? 